suffering the children of God in the same land must not suffer there must be a clear distinction that we are the children of God From today, the stroke is gone. In the name of Jesus, yes, yes, in Jesus' name, the stroke is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody lift your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. Say, I am free from today. Now, how many people have their Bibles with them? Can I see your Bible? Can I see your Bible? Lift your Bible. Lift your, lift your Bible. Can we stand on our feet? We, everybody from the back to the front, let's stand on our feet as we read the word of God. Uh, so today I am going to talk about the lessons from the ten lepers. Let's all say the lessons. Lessons from the, the title is Lessons from the Ten Lepers Story. The story of the ten lepers. So let's open uh, Luke 17, verse 11 to verse 19. Are we all there? Hello? All right, we want to read together from our Bibles. So let's read from verse 11. I want us to read together. Whatever version you have, I want you to read from your Bible. I'm not going to read for you. I want you to read aloud from your Bible, if you're, if you're an, an iPad or whatever. Uh, that you have, I want you to open your word, the Bible. Now, if you see somebody seated who has got legs next to you, uh, unless if they don't have legs, but if they have legs, can you help them to stand? Hallelujah. Help them to stand on their feet to honor God. Hallelujah. I want them to read the word of God. We want to start to read the word of God. My guys, uh, someone with a, with a with a chauffeur, 
they are, they are called shofars. It's called the vuvuzela here, but in Israel they call it a shofar. When it's time to read the word, they blow the shofar so that people's attention comes to them. Can you blow the shofar a little bit? Can we celebrate? Let's clap hands for the word of God. The word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, someone is starting a ministry of shofars. In equal life, you can start any ministry anytime. All right. I will read from my verse. Now it happened, verse 11, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, it's not named, there met him ten men. How many men? Who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Other version says this stranger. Verse 19. And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you well. Let's go to verse 11. I will be going scripture by scripture. Hallelujah. Um, let's just lift our hands. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name right now. We speak the presence of the Lord, the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this place today, I pray that you heal your people, you deliver your people, you touch your people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, may well all the people say, Amen. I think um, maybe before I preach, I want to salute uh, an apostle in the marketplace, uh, a man that is rising in the world with a product. I think you have heard of Eros, Eros, uh, which is a product which is selling all over the world, uh, that is selling... Uh, in fact, uh, air fresheners and so many other things. Uh, the founder and the CEO of that company has visited us today. Can we welcome all the way from Cape Town, South Africa, Pastor Lawrence Mosia? Where are you? Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Pastor Lawrence? We celebrate you. May God bless you from, uh, he is a born again child of God. Hallelujah. And a pastor as well from Rafa Fellowship Center in Cape Town. We honor you. May the Lord our God continue to bless arrows in Jesus' mighty name. We, I'm using even your products, some of your products in my house. May the Lord, what a powerful product uh, you, you, you started. Hallelujah. Now, when you go to verse 11, the Bible says, Now it happened 
as he went to Jerusalem, which means now whenever you see the Bible saying, saying now it happened, it means that thing had not happened before. So it's happening because Jesus is being intentional, intentional, he is being intentional, he is doing it deliberately to go through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now, uh, to educate you a little bit, the Galilean region in Israel is the region where mostly Jewish people reside because that is where there is Nazareth, uh, Cana, and uh, the, so the lower and the upper Galilee. So it's mostly a Jewish territory. It's mostly then Samaria. Samaria, it is the nebulous area where they are Philistine, the, 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 Philly, the Philistines are. Uh, they were they are there uh, the uh, in, in in that area uh, the, some of them the Pakistanians uh, that are there and um, uh, they dwell in that region most of the Islamic people they are in the region of Samaria today but during that time there was a group called the Samaritans uh, which was dwelling there it is a mixed breed. Uh, between the Assyrians and the Jewish people. Uh, when a Jewish person would marry an Assyrian, they would give birth to a child called a Samaritan. So they had their own worship places, their own places which are different from Jewish people, their own mountains and their own priests in Samaria. So there were no dealings between Jews and Samaritans, even in marriage and so forth. So the mid, the, 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 the this village that is being talked about in the Bible, which is between Samaria and Galilee, that's where the Samaritans soldiers would come and fight with the Jewish soldiers. So lepers would come and stay there because to them, though it was a dangerous zone, it was better to be there because not many people were willing to pass through that region. Because just going through there as a Jewish person, because remember, Jesus was a Jewish Jesus. Jesus came Jewish on earth. His complexion, he was Jewish. He came through uh, the Jewish origins. So passing through that area, it was very provocative, especially to the Samaritans, especially if you were Jewish. That's why the Bible is saying now it happened that Jesus had to risk himself to pass through that region. Why? Because prophetically he knew the assignment that heaven had given him that day. He knew he was going to meet the ten lepers. That were there who needed a miracle. So he intentionally, deliberately passed through a risk area to deal with something. So the Lord was speaking to me that before you even preach, I want you to announce that today my anointing is intentionally and deliberately going to pass through some areas. Some dangerous areas which have never been traced, which has never been stepped on by the feet of the king. Jesus is saying, I am going to pass through, I am going to walk those dangerous areas in your life for the sake of your deliverance, for the sake of your testimony, for the sake of your miracle. Can somebody shout, I receive my miracle? Shout, I receive my miracle. So Jesus risked his life and passed through that dangerous territory between Galilee and Samaria. And the Bible says he met 10 men who were lepers. It was a group of lepers. Now, I want you to understand something. Why these men were moving like that? Because the leprosy was a very contagious disease. So, so the priests during that time, they were the ones who were the district medical officers. 
pastors were the district medical officers. Uh, so since it was a plague or a pandemic during those days, they would validate or approve or maybe diagnose someone and say, you, you have been found to have leprosy and they will isolate you. They would isolate you from the society, from the community. So you would be ostracized. You would become an outcast and they will quarantine you. These quarantines that we saw during COVID, they started in the word of God. So they would quarantine you, put you in a bush, separate you from the, uh, the, the wealth of the community. I think uh, there are some people who were quarantined during COVID. Is there anybody who went into a quarantine? I think you understand what it means to be quarantined. Can you stand if you were once quarantined? Hallelujah. Just stand up. Just stand. You, you once went into a quarantine. They understand what I'm talking about, where you are separated uh, from the cosmopolitan, from the, you can sit down, from, from your family, from everyone. Now, because leprosy, during those days, it was incurable. Nowadays, uh, it can be treated because of technology and uh, some medical inventions that have, uh, that have come. There are now some tablets, because they say in the world, Right now, there is a more than 200,000 people with leprosy who are living in leprosy centers, but they are treating them. But during that time, it was incurable. There was no treatment for, for, for leprosy. So you were regarded an outcast for the rest of your life. It was not a temporal isolation. It was actually permanent. So you would be ostracized from the community just like that. So now what these people would do, they would form communities to survive, to share information. So you'd find a group of 10 lepers on, the, on that other corner. Maybe under a certain tree, you see maybe 14 lepers because they, they, they would share ideas, help each other, because there was nobody who was willing to come near them. And according to Leviticus chapter 14 and chapter 13, whenever... You had leprosy. If you would meet people that have no leprosy, you were supposed to shout, unclean, unclean, unclean. So you would shout, unclean, unclean, I'm unclean, so that they don't come near you. If you would not shout, unclean, unclean, you would be stoned to death. So it was a painful moment, a painful a thing to have leprosy. And leprosy in the word of God is regarded as, as, as sin. It is a typology of sin. So what, what it would do, you were not only isolated, but this sickness would affect everything about you. Because it, use, it, it affects even your bones. They begin to crack sometimes or separate on their own. And it's very possible to see a person with leprosy even losing fingers, falling off, and sometimes even rats would come and just take one maybe of your toes and run away with it. So it was, it was very painful. Even the, 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 your skin pigmentation would change. It would become reddish white, white reddish. So the priests were taught on how to diagnose that type of a disease. You, you, so they say even sometimes your nose would break and your face would disfigure on its own. You know, so you would go through emotional distress, spiritual distress, and physical distress altogether. So it, it also affects your respiratory system. So which means even when they are speaking, they, they don't really speak properly like we do because they have respiratory problems as well <sighs> because it affects even your body so to hear that a man with a leprosy lifted his voice to shout it was also uh, something that is worth the celebration that is why it is written in the word of god so it was a dangerous contagious disease so for it not to spread in communities the same way we didn't want COVID to spread they would isolate those people from the community 
And now, Jesus is coming because he realized these people that there are some, a group of people that is there. And he met these ten lepers. Now, the Holy Spirit began to minister to me something that the reason why there were ten or maybe you would see 14 lepers that are there, as I was saying, it is because, you know, they were sharing the same misery, the same plight, the same problems, the same pain. So I think there were groups that were like that to encourage each other and so forth and to share their pains. So the Holy Spirit spoke to me that spiritually, you discover that even in the church, we have got cliques. All churches worldwide, they have got cliques or groups or associations of people that gather together. In the physical realm, in physics, they say opposite poles repel. And uh, in fact, like poles repel and op opposite poles, north and south, they attract. But it's not like that. In the spirit, like poles attract, they don't repel. So you find out right now, some of you, you are in a certain group. You are in a certain association in the church. And what you discover is that the associations that you attract, they reflect what is in you. They reflect what is in you. So they, now, if you see yourself always attracting people that are gossipers it's a reflection of who you are can you shake someone and say do you know who you are <laughs> say if you want to know who you are tell them if you want to know who you are say check the characteristics of the people around you now in the church i don't know what happens Oh, you know, when you just come to church like this, after some, uh, after some time you will notice, even if you have lust of women, you find yourself, you are now just a friend or in a fellowship of a group in ego life that is, that is struggling with the lust of women. And that is always discussing the legs of women and so forth. So people always tend to attract what they have. Now, if you also see yourself surrounded with some crazy guys that have got drama, it's a sign of what is in you as well. That you are also crazy and you have some drama that needs deliverance. So it's, a, it's about what is in you. Can you tell the person next to you, say, you attract what is in you? So they would end up now being in associations. So that's why every time I always want to check who is around me because it shows me what is in me. You don't need a prophet to tell you who you are. You just need to check your associations. You need to check their patterns, their behavioral patterns, their characters. So if you are an intercessor, you attract intercessors. If you are a man of faith, you attract people of faith. There, there is a girl that, that came to me one day and said, Prophet, I think it was a boy, a brother, who came and said, man of God, pray for me that I, I, you know, I kept myself. I am a virgin. I am a brother. I want a girl that is also a virgin that has kept herself. I don't want to marry a sister that has wasted her body. So pray for me. I said, I don't need to pray for you because what I have discovered in the house of God, you attract who you are. You, you attract people like you. So I told told him that even if a girl is to navigate to you, the one who will navigate is a virgin. You don't need prayer. Those who are not virgins, also they will attract those who are not. I'm, I'm not mocking anyone, but I have noticed it. I was a youth when I was young. So I, I know these things. So that's why even when I was young, I never bothered. I was a virgin. And uh, I just found bumping into a girl that was also a virgin. Hallelujah. I'm sorry if I'm offending someone. But there are some things that don't need prayer. Because you always attract who you are. The same kind of people 
that are like you always come around you. Now, can you ask someone next to say, who is around you? Ask them again, say, who is around you? <laughs> can you lift your hand and say, Lord, change me today so that I may attract the correct people around my life in the name of Jesus. Can you shout a big amen? Say, hallelujah. So if you have pain, you also attract people who have got pain. If you are anti-prosperity, you will see people that will be around you are people who don't like tithing, who criticize giving. It's a sign. Once you see that group around you, that's what you are. That is what is in you. So it always comes around you. And you need to pray. I noticed even the people that I attract around me are people who think like me, who behave like me. Because I, so the, now, don't try to change your friends. Change yourself first. When you change and you come to your association, they will not want to continue fellowshipping with you because they will notice you are no longer like them. Something about you has changed. So before you can change your friends, you change yourself first. Then when you change first, your friendship changes. When you start to pray, you are prayerful and you, you begin to develop your faith and you like to, to read books, you know, to explore things of the spirit. You begin to notice that is what you begin to attract around you. I noticed when I was a youth that we had cliques in the church. There were groups. Our group was a group of boys that loves intercession. We loved God. We were serving God. We were God-fearing, and there were, there were other groups, they, and every group had a leader. There was another one, we knew that one, it, it was always discussing about the beautiful girls or which new girl has come into the church. So they had a radar also that would maybe scan in that area. That was their business. Our business was to follow who is the man of God, the man of the moment, and we would study them, we would pray. So we loved God, and most of them are now apostles in Fig. It was a unique group. In our group, you could not discuss about girls. It was impossible. We were challenging each other. I fasted for the first time, five days, five nights. And I would say, I want also to go and do it. And I would go and do seven days, seven nights. And then another time, another brother would come that I'm now praying nine hours, non-stop, speaking in tongues. And I say, no, I am going. And I would come back and say, I'm now praying 12 hours in tongues, non-stop. So we were challenging each other. But I noticed there is another group even today they have been in so many divorces. So even amongst the girls, the youths in the church, we have different groups. In leadership, there are different groups. There are some going opposite, some going north, some going positive. So we have so many groups. So be very careful which group you associate with in the house of God because it determines your future. It determines your destiny in the kingdom of God. I noticed most of the guys who were also doing some other things, there was another group that didn't love God. They never wanted to serve God. I have seen most of them have been in prisons. We had the same pastor receiving the same word, but after 10 or 15 years, we were all different. We were different. And I am where I am today. Because of what I chose to follow and the people that I chose to put around my life. Now, when the Bible says, when, uh, please, can you, uh, can you give me, I, I want my time, my time, please, uh, uh, give me about um, maybe 30, 35 minutes, put the countdown, 35 minutes there. I want you to lift your hand, say, Holy Spirit, say, help me today. Lift your hands, say, help me in the area of associations. 
Yeah, you, you must know associations are very important because they corrupt good habits. If you have bad association, your habits will be corrupted. Now the Bible says they would stay, they, the lepers, whenever they would meet a group of people without leprosy, they would stand afar. Now remember, as I said, because my, today I'm not, I'm, my message is going to be narrative, a narrative uh, preaching or teaching. When it's narrative, it means you pick the points which God is revealing to you. I'm not going to say point number one, point number two. Hallelujah. It's not going to be in point form. It's just a narrative teaching and preaching. So you pick what God is putting in your heart, in your spirit, and you write down those points that the Holy Spirit is giving you. Now, the Bible says, as I told you, that people that had leprosy would be ostracized. And it was a typology of sin. The same way leprosy affected the whole being of a person. Sin also does the same. Sin affects your whole being. Do you know that even sin affects even your health system? The way you even breathe, when you have guilt and condemnation, it kills you. There are some people that have got stress-related diseases because they are living in sin. There is no way, people of God, listen to me, that you can live in sin and live a peaceful life. Whenever you live in sin, you will always have guilt and condemnation. There will be worry, there will be stress in your life. Sinful people are not happy people. It affects your inside and your outside. Sin affects everything about you. If you want to live a peaceful, happy life, run away from sin. So that's why when they saw Jesus, they stood afar off. They were standing afar off. Why? Because, you know, you don't feel worthy to approach even the altar when you, when you have got leprosy, when you are living a sinful life. You always want to stay far. So I, I have a challenge with a person. January to December, you always want to, to sit at the back there. You don't want to be close to the anointing. I'm not saying it's bad to sit at the back, but it must not be your place for the rest of your life. Why are you not coming closer to Jesus? Why is it you are far off? Now, any time you sin against God, any time you commit adultery, you always feel a sense of, uh, of rejection. There is repulsion that happens. You always start to withdraw from the presence of God. So once you see, you are sitting in the front, but now you are now withdrawing. You are now sitting uh, maybe about seven rows from the front. Next Sunday, you are now sitting about 14 rows. Something is happening within you. It's not the distance. The distance is showing you what is actually taking place in your life. So that's why when you are sinning against God, it's not easy to be prayerful. It's not easy even to read the word. It's not easy to open the Bible. Some of you, because you sinned this month, that's why you have stopped praying. So whenever you see you are drifting away from Jesus, it's a sign that there is some leprosy infection that has already contaminated you. You now have got a leprosy infection. You now have got some sins that have already come into your life. So whenever there is sin, you start to stay aloof from the things of God. You stay far from the things of God. Once you see a Christian now missing services, they are no longer coming to church. They are no longer even coming to give or they are no longer coming to be prayed for, or something is happening, there is sort of now like a distancing towards the things of God. Yes, they attend church, but they are no longer plugged in. There is no connection. 
It means something is happening spiritually. That's how you quickly notice that hell is now visiting you. You check the distance. Once you start to feel distance towards the man of God. Distance towards the things of God. It's a sign something is happening spiritually in your life. When you now only open the Bible when you are in church, something is happening. Remember, you used to pray, you used to read the Bible. So it's a sign you have been infected with leprosy. Sin has already come. That's why you begin to distance. So if I saw you five rows here, seated and next Sunday, you are now ten rows. And I see you now 15 rows away from me. Are you, most of you have noticed sometimes I call you to my office. That my son, do you have something to confess to me? Because I know that movement that is happening, there is something happening in the spirit. And by the time you are at the back there, the next thing you will be out of church. So we have to talk. There are some of you, you are now too distant. We have to talk after service. You have to call me. There must be guilt somewhere, somewhere. Why are you feeling contamination? Because contamination does not just come for no reason. There must be something you did which is making you to feel dead, which is making you to feel unworthy to approach the presence of God. There is something wrong that is happening in your life and you need repentance. You need a confession. Then your prayer life will come back. Your love for God will come back. Your fear for God will come back. There is no way you can just distance yourself from the things of God when something is not happening. It's either you are cheating your wife and you now have got a, an extramarital affair. You know, every human being has got a conscience. That is a gift which we were given by God for us to know when we are correct or we are right. There is a radar inside of you that teaches you and tells you whether you are right or not. You don't need a prophet. Your spirit man. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit in you is used by God for you to pick whether you are in the right direction or not. And if you are not careful, now what starts to happen when you start sinning? Distance starts to happen. Number two, some, the devil starts to plant a lot of things. You start to see yourself, you are no longer enjoying church, you are now sleeping in the church. And you are now too busy for God. There are people who just come faster, faster to church quickly, they leave quickly. No, it's not because they are busy. There is condemnation. They don't want to stay too long around other Christians because it reminds them of the lifestyle that they are living. But if you are busy, it's okay. But most, it's not that. So you don't want to greet people. You just want to leave. And if you are not careful, you end up even taking drugs, you end up even drinking beer, you end up doing so many things. So don't continue drifting away like that. Do something about that. Don't, don't watch yourself backsliding. You have to do something. When you are seeing you are distancing yourself on your own, you, you know, you are no longer feeling worthy to be in the presence of God. You need to do something about that. That why am I no longer interested in reading the word? Why am I no longer interested in, in, pre, in, in doing what I used to do? I used to serve in the house of God, but I'm no longer serving. If you are now standing afar off, I have got, I have got a, a teaching for you that you need to do your own personal analysis of where you are today. Because I, I, there are some people that are seated at the back but are very close to God. Then there are some 
who are also seated there who are now very far, far away from God. So it's about your spiritual distance which matters. Can you lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I pray today that you may bring me closer. Lift your hands and say, bring me closer. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, when you go to verse 18, verse 18, put verse 18. The Bible says when they saw Jesus from far off, you know, even though they were standing afar off, they lifted up their voices. If you want to be saved, you must learn to call upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And some, now, when you come in the house of God, let me teach you something. Throw away your dignity. The house of the Lord is not a place of being cute all the time. You, you, you need to make sure that sometimes you break protocol. And you lift your voice and say, man of God, you say, Jesus, have mercy on me. There are some times when you need to cry. In Shona, there is a proverb that says, Mwana cheme anofirambereko. What it means is that in English, when uh, maybe I don't know if I will interpret well, when, when, when you have got a baby uh, who, whom you are carrying at the back, you know, like the African women, the way they carry children at the back, the, they say that if that baby does not cry from the back, the baby will die there in that baby career at the back. So you need to cry out so that you don't die. So you need to cry out. You need to lift your voice. There are some times when we must not be dignified because sometimes you miss your miracles because of dignity. You miss your miracles because you want to be cool. Like they say today that be cool. Hallelujah. There are some times not to be cool. I can't be cool when I'm dying. I can't be cute when I'm losing myself, when I'm losing my life. I have to cry out. I have to say, Jesus, do something with my life. Brethren, sometimes when you notice that things are no longer going on well, even when the man of God is preaching, you are allowed to run to the front. Kneel down and lift your hands and say, man of God, pray for me. Dignity blocks your miracle receptivity. So I'm, when I want what I want, I bulldoze myself to get it. So there are some times to break protocol so that you save your life. So these men, they cried out. And I thank God when they lifted up their voice. What is called lifting up your voice? It is a deliberate raising of your voice so that you are heard. The problem with the body of Christ today is that when we came to Jesus, before we received Jesus, we were first of all, most of us Africans, introduced to mainline churches. So by the time we came, we were told, no, those ones are Pentecostals. They are noisy people. They didn't tell you that the word of God is a noisy, is a noisy dimension. All miracles that were done in the word of God, most of them were associated with noise. All people that received miracles, they had to make some noise. But Maos had to cry, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. You have to lift your voice, to raise it, so that you are heard. So by the time you come, you have this sort of like uh, imprisonment or captivity in your mindset. That you know, when you are in church, you can't make noise. When you are in church, you have to be quiet. A church is a place of people that are receiving miracles. It's a place of people receiving testimonies. You can't be quiet when God is blessing you. Hallelujah. 
Now, even if there is a, a mango tree that is very tasty in your area, there is nobody who eats a good tasty mango or maybe gets into a shop which is selling good things, quality, cheap, and keeps quiet about it. They talk about it. They always talk about it that come there is a good tree. So, so, they, so in the house of God, there are people always talking about something. That's why David said, your house is a place full of joy. It's a place full of testimonies. It's a place full of people that are declaring the good things that God has done for them. It's not a quiet place. Can you shout amen? amen. Can you shout a big amen? amen? Can you lift your voice and shout a big amen? Can you shout Jesus? Jesus? Now, can you shout Jesus? Jesus? No, some of you I'm hearing like you are shouting Jesus. Please, can you don't say Jesus? Can you shout Jesus? Jesus. Now they shouted the name of who? Jesus. Can you lift your voice and shout the name of? Jesus. Can I hear you aloud? Shout the name of. Now, when you call that name, there is a response from heaven. When you call that name, if, now, even when you are being involved in an accident, when you shout, when you lift your voice and call upon that name, angels are released, power is released, miracles are released. Everybody shout that name. No, I'm not hearing you. Can you shout the name? Jesus. Oh, Rabbi, can we clap hands for the name of Jesus? Clap hands for the name of Jesus. There is nobody that dies when they call upon the name of the Lord. Whether you are about to be involved in an air crash, do not die because you are in business class. Because it's a place of dignified people. I, when it's disaster time, I lift my voice. I, I lose my manners. And I call upon the name of Jesus. And I know I'm saved. My wife knows I don't joke. Once the devil tries to attack me anyway, I will call upon the name of the Lord. I don't care whether there is a president. I will say, excuse me, you will become my president after my shout. For now, uh, there is one president that I know who can save me because we can tie together, Mr. President. With our dignity. Because sometimes, you know, when you are near a president, God can promote you to fly first class with the CEOs and uh, with the presidents. But when it's disaster time, you need to break protocol. Even if there is a president of Zambia, you need to know there is another president of presidents. The master of masters. The king of kings. Uh, who can serve presidents? And you as well. And his name is Jesus. So that name, Jesus, when it's mentioned, it releases power that is unspeakable. Power that is indescribable. Miracles, they start to take place. Angels cannot stand still when the name Jesus has been mentioned. They have to be energetic. They have to be active. They have to do something. Heaven moves when that name is mentioned. There is divine movement, some invisible movement that happens in the spiritual realm when the name Jesus, diseases move away, sicknesses move away, challenges, mountains, they skip like rams running away when that name is mentioned. And they mentioned the name Jesus, which means the Savior. And then... They didn't end. They, they moved from the dimension of, move, of calling Jesus. They called him. Then they said, Jesus. Check verse 13. And then they said, Master. Now, the realm of Jesus, listen to me, is the realm of salvation. It is the realm of the Savior. Usually, the realm of Jesus is the realm which we usually call when we are in trouble. But you need to move and mature 
from calling Jesus just Jesus, the Savior. And he must become your master. Some of these guys were smart enough not only to call him Jesus, but to call him master. <laughs> now, that is now spiritual maturity now. Because it's the, in Hebrew, it's the word epistes. 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 E-P-I-S-T-A-T-E-S. Epistes. Which means the supreme commander. The supreme commander of our lives. Master. Now, when, now, so the reason why so many of us are not truly blessed, we are blessed but not truly, is because Jesus is still your savior but is not yet your master. Now, when Jesus becomes your master, what it means is that from that very moment, he now begins to sit on the throne of your life. You no longer do what you want to do, but you do what he wants you to do. Right. You begin to listen to commands. The realm when Jesus becomes a master in your life, it's a powerful realm. That is not a realm for new converts. It's not a realm for spiritual babies. It's a realm of maturity where you now do what he tells you to do. He now becomes your commander. I think those who were in the army understands what I'm talking about. That's why that man received a miracle in Matthew 8. He was a soldier. He said, Jesus, you don't need to come under my roof. Just to say a word and my servant will be healed. Because I am a man in the army. I understand the word of a ranked official, how it works. It is respected. When I say to someone, come, they come. When I say go, they go. So you don't need to come. Just speak a word. Because he realized that he was dealing with a general. A general's words and mouth, they are respected in the spiritual realm. When they say something, it is honored. Why? Because demons, they respect ranks. Even though you don't respect ranks, demons respect the sons of Issachar. They knew how to keep rank and they understood and honored rank. So you have to understand something. That when Jesus is now your master, it's, it's now something serious. What he says, that's what we do. Because he's now a man, which means he's now controlling my life. I'm no longer going where, wherever I want to go. And when Jesus becomes your master, you don't go wherever you want to go. You don't do whatever you want to do. You do what he wants you to do. You go where he wants you to be at that time. Then it means he is now master. He's now mastering your life. He's now controlling your life. So it's a realm of maturity where we begin to submit to his supreme authority and commander. He's a supreme commander. That's why I noticed it's very easy to pastor people who were in the army before. Like uh, uh, Officer Abel, can you stand? This man I know, how do I know? Before even I knew that he was a soldier. I saw the way he respects instructions. It's one because in army, they are taught when someone is a lieutenant colonel, and you, you are a sergeant. Even if you are older than that person, if you are a war vet, if they pick a young boy, twenty-one years to be a lieutenant colonel, when they tell you come, you come running. When they say salute, you salute. It's not about age. You only see that in the church. Soldiers, they understand instructions. You don't question a high-ranked officer's instruction. So that's why they are easy to, to pastor. Very, very easy. I have noticed even Apostle Njobo, they were very, very easy to pastor. Why? Because they are taught, because in army, they remove the civilian mentality of, of when you are told the jump, you say, why? <laughs> that is being civilian. In the army, you don't say, why? Ah. If they say roll in the mud, you say, thank you, say, and you start to roll in. If they say laugh, you all start to laugh, even if there is no reason to laugh. Because a ranked official must be honored. If they say run, you run. 
So it's instilled in them. They make you to go through a process of six months or three years to remove the civilian mentality in you. So soldiers, in their mind, they are not civilians. They are not like human beings. They have already programmed them. That's why even when the economy, that's why you notice even police, even when the economy is going down and things are not okay, and if they are told, beat these guys. That's why you don't understand. Because this civilian is no longer in there. They will beat you. Because they understand instructions. Because that civilian mentality was removed. And I want you to know that the kingdom of God is an army. We operate with the principles from the army. We have ranks, bishop, overseer, pastor, apostle. So there are ranks and titles. And the spiritual realm knows. Demons, they know the difference between a deacon and an apostle. It's only you who doesn't know the difference. And they even tremble. They don't just believe. They move. So we need to move from a realm where Jesus becomes our savior and mature to the level where he becomes master. When he is master, <laughs> that level, when I look very, it's about 10%, maybe 5% of Christians who are in that realm. Do you know what is called master? Master is when you have built your own house a beautiful house, and Jesus comes and says, give it away, I want it. Can I go deeper? <laughs> because some of you are thinking of tithing. No, it's deeper than tithing. We are still mastering our own lives. He is our savior, but he's not yet master. Very few people are, are mastered by Jesus. Or some of you are still struggling with the tithing. <laughs> Tithing, basic, basic fundamental principles that are supposed to be known by new converts. You, you are now 10 years, 7 years, you are still struggling with that. Then you are still far away. We can't talk of Jesus being your master because you rule yourself. You speak what you want to speak. You go where you want to go. You do whatever you want to do. This is the reason why people in the world are going to go to hell. Because they don't have one controlling their lives. They are mastering their own selves. So if you think you don't want to come to church, you just abscond and you stay at home. Because you don't have a master in your life. When you have a master, you can't sit home on Sunday. Because the word master, maybe to put it in terms that you understand, is boss. You need a boss who bosses your life around. Because who tells you what to do? Because a, a boss is not questioned. Was a boss in the boss, Amazon? Yeah, you know boss, eh? How are you boss? Was boss. <laughs> so that is the word master. He's a boss. He's the one in charge. He's the one controlling everything. He's the one who must be honored. He's the one who must be respected. Can you lift your hand and say, Lord Jesus, be my master from today? In Jesus' name. Do you know the picture that I am seeing? Can I have a chair? Can I have a chair? Come, come, bring your chair. Young man. Quickly come. All right. Maybe... All right, without a chair, just leave your chair there. I, can, I, can I have two? Yeah, come, the two of you. Come, another guy, come, come, come. I want to demonstrate up here what is happening in the body of Christ. Quickly, I want to pray for people now. Let's say this is Jesus. Can you come? This seat is the throne of the life of this brother. So when he receives Jesus, all right, can you, can you sit there? Can you sit, sit? Before you are born again, you are the one sitting on the throne of your life. 
you are seated there. You do whatever you want. You go wherever you want to go. But when you receive Jesus, you must move. Kneel down. You kneel down. And Jesus sits on the throne of your life. Can you sit there? He is the one who must sit on the... Everybody is what is called the throne of his life, which is the willpower that God gave you. So on that willpower, it's Jesus that must sit on that seat of power in your life. When we now talk of what we call Christians that are in Christ, this must be the picture. But what I'm seeing in the spirit, can you kneel down? And you, you sit down. Well, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Jesus is kneeling and you are seated. So many people are in church, but this is the situation that I'm seeing in the spirit. You, that's why you have that behavior that you have. Because Jesus is not yet master. You received him, but he is actually the one begging you to do things. Why is it you need 20 preachers to teach you something? For you to do it. Because it's not about the teaching. The Lord was saying, Jesus, my son, if you teach as pastor, you can bring conferences after conferences, preachers after preachers, powerful bishops with deep revelations. But if you don't correct that position, no matter what you say to that brother there, there is nothing that will change. Because the, this status quo, this scenario, has to be corrected. Or even if I teach him tithe, he will not tithe. If I teach him stop lasting after women or do this, come to church in time, he will not come. Because he is still seated on the throne of his life. He is still ruling himself. Jesus is not yet the supreme commander, the apostles in his life. The apostles. He is the one who is the commander. So today I have come that this situation must change. Can you go into your position? I prophesy in your life that this must take place. Can you celebrate? I said this has to take place from today. Rakashabada. Lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, help me to take my correct position from today. Be master. Lift your hands. Say, be master. Lift your hands. Say, be master. Say, be the commander of my life in Jesus' mighty name. Can we shout a big amen? amen? Clap your hands and shout a big amen. You can be seated. God bless you. So he, he did not, they did not, they called in unison, Jesus, master. And the other thing that they said was, have mercy on us. We need mercy. Hallelujah. Can you shout, have mercy? Mercy is receiving what you don't deserve. It's receiving what you are not qualified for, what you are not worthy to receive. That is mercy. The Bible in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, it says his mercies are new every morning. So we need to cry for Jesus' mercies. Mercy is when you are living in a sinful life, when you have leprosy, and he just comes and blesses you with the healing when you don't deserve it. So I thank God because Jesus didn't only brought mercy, but he brought tender mercies. There is tenderness in his mercies. He's a loving God. He's a gracious and a compassionate God. Whatever you are going through, he understands your pain. Uh, we, he understands what you are going through. He, he brought mercy. It's not some old mercies. These are fresh mercies that he gives us every morning. There is fresh mercies that you must receive every morning. Can you shout, I receive them? 
Lift your hand and say, I receive them. This is the best thing in the kingdom of God. Is the ability and the opportunity to receive mercy every morning. Do you know that there are new messes every morning? Even when you woke up today, there are new messes that you received. So it's a benefit for those who are in Christ Jesus. You get new messes. Can you tell the person next, you say, look at me, I received new messes today. <laughs> and tender man, messes. The Bible says, and Jesus, when they called that, he saw them. Oh, my God. You know, when you are reading the Bible, sometimes you must not be too fast. You must pause and meditate. Because there will be a lesson that God is trying to teach you. Sometimes if you are too fast, you miss certain things. So when I stopped there, the Lord said, when he saw them, he saw them. So the Lord was saying, I want you to go and tell my people that I have seen them. He notices when you are going through a painful situation, when you are going through tough times, he notices and he stops. Human beings can ignore you, but I have good news. There is Jesus who will never ignore you. People can ostracize you. They can isolate you. But there is one, even when you are in a dangerous bush, in a dangerous village, and you have been ostracized by the whole community, there is a man called Jesus who has got love to come through between the midst of Samaria and Galilee just to locate you, just to pick you out, just to bless you. His name is Jesus. He notices. He notices. He knows you need a husband, my daughter. He notices and he comes specifically to deal with that situation. There are some moves. Do you know that Jesus can bring a preacher from America just to release your husband? Jesus can do something to release your miracle. Something risky to release your blessing. So when you are in pain, when you are isolated and rejected, you feel lonely, you feel, you feel like nobody loves you. There are some people who are looking at me, you want to commit suicide. I, uh, there are two people that I'm going to pray for. You have got suicidal thoughts because you think everybody has rejected you. But the Lord told me, go and tell them that I have seen them. I saw them before this service and I'm going to bless them before the service ends. I want you to know there is one who notices people of God. I might fail to notice you, but continue serving. There is a man who notices. Whatever you are doing, don't do things to please the prophet. Because sometimes you might go all the way to please me. And I'm sorry because I'm human. I might not notice sometimes. I might not comment as you would want. Because this is a mega church. But I want you to know there is somebody who never misses whatever good you are doing for him. He notices. That's why we must serve as unto the Lord. Don't do things with, for eye service. Don't do things to be seen by the man of God. You can be disappointed. That's why there are so many people in the church disappointed that the pastor didn't notice me. No, when you come to church, don't put your hope on men. Your hope must be in Jesus. Who notices, he sees. Sometimes I ignore little children because of their height. I might not see them down there. But there is one who notices even the little children. When the disciples were, were saying, no, don't, the little children move away, he said, bring them to me, for such belongs the kingdom. 
He loves everybody. He can notice everyone, even the one seated at the back there. You think you are a nobody because you grew up being told you are ugly. You grew up being told you will never make it in life. You will never amount to anything. I have come to tell you that when you open your heart to a man called Jesus, if you receive him, he will notice you. He will locate you. He will lift you up from the dust. He will bless you. He will show your people because he notices that's why I like him that's why I love him that's why I worship him because he notices that's why there are so many people angry how could the prophet comment so and so and not me imagine what I have done for ego life I have given so much I have done so much I have done this and this I uh, know I will stop supporting the work of God because the man of God is not fair now let me tell you humans are not fair because the human beings they don't have the capacity to notice as God does because uh, now, now uh, the, the time you want my comment, I will be looking at my time because the clock will be ticking. I want to close the service. So it's not deliberate, but because I'm limited, I'm not God. Sometimes I might ignore to comment you, not because you are not doing good, but because I am a human being. And sometimes I'm going through all my, own, my own problems. God doesn't have problems, but prophets can have problems. Pastors can have problems. And sometimes, because they are distracted by the problems that are around their lives, they might not notice you. But Jesus, Jesus, Jesus cannot miss. So that's why when you are cleaning the church, that's why I love cleaning. Because when you are in the cleaning department, nobody notices you. Now, if you want to go to heaven faster, join the cleaning department. Because it teaches you not to live by comments. Because nobody sees them as they clean toilets. So even if the man of God does not comment them, they have no problem. Yeah, because they know God is watching. He is called the Biala Hairoi. The Bible says Hagar, when she was in the bush, she was shocked when God came. And she said, so you notice people even in the bush. And she named a well, Bia Lahai Roy, the Lord God who sees even in the bush. And she made an altar unto the Lord called Bia Lahai Roy. Bia means a well, Lahai Hallelujah. Roy means the one who shepherds, who sees. Even in the bush, he is Roy. He is your shepherd. When people are talking bad about you, when they are gossiping you, Jesus is planning something powerful to bless you, to lift you, because he notices. Continue, my daughter, doing what you are doing. Even if you are being criticized in ushering, or in your department don't stop serving because of people's words i want you to learn to continue doing whatever you are doing because there is one who notices and you reward you that's why in the gardens i called them from uh, some of my sons from president worship mama had to rebuke them that the elders are not watching us the elders are not noticing us who is an elder a human being. So you stop saving God. You stop growing your golden crowns in heaven because of an elder in the church. Because elder did not comment. Hey, you know, they are not watching our welfare. They are not seeing us. Because they are humans. You are trying to come to an elder to help you. An elder who has a son yesterday who told him you are a useless father. He is dealing with that. And you, you want him to comment when he has his own problems. When I stop that habit of depending on a man, depend on Jesus. He has an issue. He has an appointment with the prophet. And you, you want a comment from that elder. Which comment will you get from an elder like that?
You, you don't even bother to ask why elder never saw your situation. Because he's also in the same situation, even worse than you. Maybe he caught his son yesterday taking drugs and sleeping with the maid. They have also challenges. So sometimes we put pressure to receive comments on people that don't have the capacity to do that. And we leave church because your pastor didn't appreciate you. How many times have you failed to appreciate me? Did I reject you? Did I reject you? So if I fail to appreciate you, why do you want to reject me? Why do you want to reject God? Because you also do the same. You ignore people sometimes. And the woman, you are worse. You are worse. I am even better. I comment here and there. You, you don't appreciate anybody. You are very rough. But you want everyone to be good to you, yet you are very rough. May you repent in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Clap hands for your repentance in the name of Jesus. All right. As I conclude, I want to pray. He saw them. Let's all say he saw them. And he said, go show yourselves unto the priest. Now everyone, listen. I want everyone, now I'm concluding on this one. I want you to... to, to Watch as I now conclude this. That statement Jesus said, that go and show yourselves to the priest, it was a very dangerous statement. Because if you have read your Bible, in the book of, Luke, of Leviticus, chapter 13, I want you to study it on your own, Leviticus 13 and 14. You were not allowed... To go to the priest when you were a leper. Or to show yourself to the priest until leprosy had been healed. If you would go to the priest with the leprosy and you appear in the church, you were supposed to be stoned to death. Now Jesus did not say, be thou healed, be thou cleansed. He said, you guys go and show yourselves to the priest for a testimony. Because the only time you are supposed to show yourself to the priest is when you are healed. So that statement to the guys, they understood what it meant that Jesus is saying, you are already healed before you are healed. Even though you are still seeing the leprosy, but go and testify by faith. He was testing their faith. The leprosy was still there. They were still seeing it on their bodies. You know, when, do you know that when you are sick, you, are, you accept any command? The reason why you are not accepting commands is because you are not yet sick. Do you know that you need to be very careful? The moment you get sick, people can even carry you to a traditional healer. Like you need a strong will because people who are sick are desperate. When it's very easy to deal with sick people. Even when I go to hospital, I say, do you want me? You, you can see even when you are praying for your eagle son in the hospital, the next one will be looking at you like, please come also here. They look at you. So I can see that mama, before you say, can I pray? They say, yes, 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 yes. Because they are in a desperate situation. So they take instructions. So when they were told, go, show yourselves to the priest. They st now, it was quite a distance because priests were in Jerusalem and they were in a certain village between Galilee and Samaria. So it took time as they were walking, keeping on checking their bodies. They could see, ah, now we have traveled one kilometer. It's a long distance that takes even the whole day. It's not easy to move. Maybe it can take even two days sometimes to move from, from Galilee area 
up to Jerusalem by foot. Because some of you, when you are reading the Bible, you think it was a distance of going from here to, ch to town. No. It's like going from here up to Mutare or something like that. By foot. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. So as they were walking, maybe after 200 kilometers, the leprosy was still there. Do you know sometimes when you are tired, you begin to discuss, guys, can we continue? Do we still need to go? Because nothing is happening here. But the Bible says, as they went, as they went, we are not told how many kilometers before Jerusalem, as they went, as they kept on checking, I think when they were maybe near 200, maybe kilometers remaining, when they checked themselves, they noticed something had happened to their skin. Healing had taken place. So now, now Jesus said, go to the priest. He simply said, go to church. Can you shake someone and say, go to church, go to church, go to, <laughs> go to the priest, go to where the man of God is. Now, which means Jesus also was showing them that he respects his word. That man of God, the priest must be honored. Go to the priest. He didn't say, because I'm the king of kings, you are already healed. You don't need the man of God. You don't need the pastor. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the pastor. According to Leviticus chapter 14, you are supposed to go and be diagnosed and validated by the pastor that you are no longer lepers. And they knew that the statement which Jesus said was carrying a death sentence, but they still obeyed because they wanted a miracle. And they went... And as they were going to church, as they were going to Jerusalem, a miracle happened. So the Holy Spirit was saying, go and tell my people that as they are going to where I have instructed them to go, something is going to take place. What they need is to follow instructions. You need to follow prophetic commands. You need to walk as the man of God tells you that do this. Just do it as you are doing Something will happen along the way. You need some faith. Can you shout yes? yes. Lift your hands and shout yes. yes. Now I, I want you to tell someone, say, yes, I'm going where I am going. Say, just shake them. Say, watch me, watch me, watch me. I say, watch my skin. <laughs> watch ego life. Yes, we are going to where we are going. Watch us. Something is going to happen. Now, sisters... The qualification to marry a brother is not them having a car today. It's not them having a house. Don't look at their leprosy. Do you know, I, can I give you advice, my daughter? Do you know whom you must marry? You must marry a brother on the call for Jesus. A brother that is moving. A brother that is obeying instructions. Even if he has nothing. I want you to know. You will be blessed at a certain point. <laughs> Prophetess. Just check how they are going to church. Check their move. How they move towards the priest. How they go to church. Their frequency of being on the move. That's what you want if they love God. If they follow. If they obey instructions. Once you follow that brother. You will be prosperous. I had one trousers. I had a blue trousers. When I approached my wife. She didn't look at one trousers that I had. The woman. My wife was asked by Apostle Subi, I think some of you, you saw when we went to Kenya, that what did you see in this man? Because I had told him how poor I was. I had no suit. I had no trousers. I had just one blue trousers that looks like those guys who used to work at Dairy Board. 
the milkman. A shiny blue trousers, which I would wear and sometimes wear a short to wait for it to dry on the line outside. And I came to her. She didn't see. She didn't see anything. She didn't see money. There was no money. There was no car. There was nothing. But she said, when I looked at you, what I loved is you were going. I saw you were on the go. You were moving. You were going somewhere. As you move, she knew as a brother is on the go. Something happens. Glory comes. Testimony comes. Blessings come. Yes, I might be a leper today, but check me as long as I am moving. I want you to know something will happen along the way. As long as the brother is on the go. We move from glory to glory. We move. If he's on the move, if he's coming to church, if he's loving God. You know, I was saying to my wife, you, I thank God, God revealed you. you. You were going to miss a bishop. You were going to miss a prophet. You were going to miss a man who wears nice suits. You were going to miss a blessed man. You are going to miss holidays in Singapore. Sisters, don't lose, don't look at the leprosy today. Look at the movement. If the brother is on the go, something will happen along the way. Can you shout, I am on the go? Say, I am in movement. Say, I am on the move. Can you stand up on your feet and say, I am on the move. Eagle life, as we are going, there is going to be blessings. Multi-millionaires are going to rise. Powerful people, as we move. As they were going, they were cleansed. As they were walking, they were cleansed. As long as the brother is not stagnant, as long as he's on the go. Yeah, that one say yes. Because after after 200 kilometers, something happens. After two years, something happens. Brother, I can't I can't count how many suits I have now. But remember, I had one trousers. So that's why I wear what I want at whatever time. Hallelujah. Because I was once a man with one trousers. No nothing. No nothing. Hallelujah. With a shoe that had walls underneath. And this girl called the prophetess. She said, I love you too. Ah, can you celebrate a woman with a vision? She had eyes to see. One day when I was with her in Indonesia and she was staying in one of the hotels with a personal butler, a room that she had never stayed, I said, baby, imagine if you had missed me because of my one trousers. Imagine. And she said, for sure, I thank God because I never judged you by what you had. I saw that what I just, I said, so what did you love? She said, I just knew that a man who is on the go for Jesus like this will never be poor. Will never be poor. Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? Lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, I receive your blessing today. Can you shout, I receive your blessing? And I thank God one of them when he was healed, he came back and celebrated Jesus. There were ten who were healed, but one, when God had fixed his problems, sometimes when God fixes our problems, fixes our businesses, we forget him. We love him, 
when there are some blessings on the table but once we receive blessings we forget but there is a guy who came back and he was a foreigner he was a stranger and he shouted the bible says he returned with a loud voice and appreciated and he glorified jesus yes i want you to know when you see people making noise in church sometimes you must ask what did god do for you don't judge people when you see someone dancing in the church you must know there is a reason there is a reason behind that dance don't judge oh there is something god did for them so you you lose your dignity when jesus has removed you from a place where you were a society outcast you were a societal outcast where you were ostracized permanently you know you lose everything dignity goes and you celebrate him you lift your voice so he he broke the protocol he lifted his voice he came touched the feet of jesus appreciated him and thanked him and jesus said where they not ten that were healed where are the nine where are the nine it's only ten percent that comes back to make some noise to glorify god so jesus if you check this scripture is noise loud voice lifting of voices ah can somebody lift your voice and celebrate can you lift your voice appreciate god appreciate god appreciate god appreciate god appreciate god appreciate god rakashabakata somebody shout jesus shout power shout glory shout glory can you shake somebody say i'm going to return to appreciate i'm going to return to appreciate god he has done so much for me hallelujah yes he has removed my leprosy today I want Eagle Life to know that every prophecy that was spoken about this church is going to take place. As long as we are on the move. As long as we are in action. Because faith is action. Can you take a step? Say, I'm in action in Jesus' name. Say, I am on the go to Jerusalem. Say, as I'm, can, you, can you tell the person next to say, my brother? Say, brother say get my phone number say get my business card say you need me tomorrow because as i am on the go can you tell them say look at my skin right now say keep on checking keep on checking something is going to happen a miracle is going to take place blessings are going to come do like do like they say we as ego life we are going to keep on checking Ah, when we move to 2024, I want you to check. You will see there is now a difference. Did you notice as we are moving, we have put some doors on the church. Oh, by January, check, you will see he has healed there and there. Yes, you will see there is now tiles on the ground. You will see there is now drainage outside. As we move, his power follows. His miracle power comes. So keep on coming to church. Keep on coming to church. Keep on coming to church. Shout yes. Can you walk say I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on coming. Walk around. Prophesy that I'm going to keep on moving. As you keep on moving, something is going to take place. Can we celebrate the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus? now let me tell you something you are not going to be the same person next year as you were this year we move from glory to glory you might have no car today but who knows you are the next president of coca-cola company
Don't look at your situation today. Continue going to the priest. Continue going to church. Continue coming to church. Continue coming to church. Sisters, continue coming to church. Your husband will follow you as you go. Your healing follows those who are moving. If they had remained standing, the word of healing was not going to follow. Miracles follow those who are on the go. Healing follows those who are on the go. Can we celebrate the Lord? Let's celebrate the Lord. We may be seated in the presence of God. Lift your hands, say thank you, Jesus. Can you pray in the spirit? Lift your hands, begin to speak in tongues now. Raka shaka bakata. Ramandia mahandala ba. Pray, pray, pray and thank him now. Pray and thank him now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh Lord. We glorify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, your presence is here. Your presence is here, O oh Lord. Your presence is here. Your presence is here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now there is another power of appreciation that you don't know. When he came back to thank God, Jesus said, you have been made well because of your faith. Others received, tempor they received healing, which is temporal. But the man who returned to appreciate received salvation. The word well, it means saved. Others received healing, but this one, he got an additional blessing on top of healing. He got salvation package. He was made whole in the spirit. So every time we come, I know even the way I appreciated our that we are receiving additional blessings on top of what we had last year. I know that I move a step ahead of my brothers by doing that. There are always additional blessings. There is wholeness that comes by thanksgiving. When you come to thank him for what he has done for you, you are taken to another, you are made well. Things will be well with you. There is one guy who was asking me, why is it, prophet, things are well with you? I said, because I have been made well. Because I'm always in the 10% that returns to thank him. I always make sure I am part of the group that returns to thank God. I don't miss out on the opportunities when we come to glorify God. Because I know he will make me well. You get additional extra blessings by doing that. And you begin to live in the realm of extra mile. Can I have some water? Can you lift your hands? Say thank you, Jesus. How many wants to be extra milers in life? You want the realm of extra mile. Can you celebrate being an extra mile by thanksgiving? It's very hot today. Eh? Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I will obey instructions. And I will always return to appreciate. No, I was pained this week when God started showing me how many people who received healing in this ministry, some who were in wheelchairs, some who were on crutches. And sometimes you meet them out there drinking beer. They have already forgotten. The Bible says, do not forget from the well where you were dug. Never forget the rock from where you were hanged. Many people have got a sin of forgetfulness. They quickly forget. Dr. Maligwe was saying, Prophet Shiza, why is it that you don't forget your father? My father, they own this, on that photo, the Archbishop. We are flying him to Malaysia. I think you saw it. Can you celebrate that for a holiday? 
and we funded most of it with my wife. And we always do that every year. And he asked why I have come all the time. I thought you were going to change, but I noticed you are even increasing. I don't, you know, it's a decision. I know there is a statement that people change. There are many people who are saying, Jesus will change his mind one day. They think that I will change. But they don't know the resolutions in my heart. I have made a commitment. I made a commitment long back. I know who, whose son I am. I know who is my father. And there is only one father that you will see in my life, that man that is in the front. Because I loved him when he had nothing. So I want you to know that even though human beings change, you, you must not change. There are some pastors who are telling me that I know, you know, some, you need to treat children in the church because today they are with you celebrating you tomorrow they will start criticizing you it's normal yes i know people come they get miracles they forget oh but it's not everyone who is like that i trust you are not like that because i am not like that i don't forget my god i don't forget my father i don't forget where i was taken no matter how big i will become i will continue saluting my father because I know where he took me from. So those people who think Jesus will change, they will wait until donkeys grow on. I will continue loving my father. I will continue loving my God. I told my wife, if you come next year, I will be on another level. You come the other year, I am on another level. I will not change because I made a decision not to change. But if you make a decision to change, you'll be in equal life today, tomorrow you'll be in another ministry. It is about your resolutions, it is about your heart condition, about how firm you are in decision making and leading yourself. Because it's about ability to lead your life. So when you come back to thank him, and you don't forget where you were taken from, because people forget for sure. But I don't want to be a forgetful son. Can we celebrate for the spirit of never being a forgetful son? Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, we pray for the church. We pray for them, oh God. In Jesus' name. For them to have a heart like mine. Where when I pick a father, it's my father forever. I then hope from place to place. O oh Lord, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, changing spiritual fathers, I pray, O oh Lord, O oh Father, that you put the same spirit in my sons, whom you have called in this church, to remain resolute in their hearts, to continue serving under the vision, no matter what happens in their lives, no matter if people gossip them, or even when I ignore them and I fail to notice them, let them continue serving unto the Lord, not for me to see them, but for them to be seen by God. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord. Can we celebrate? Let's clap our hands unto God. Because I was, I was arguing with my father that Archbishop, please, my father, I don't want all the time maybe to be also preaching. And let me sit down. I am a son. I want to serve. I want to run open door for you get in my father out in and out saving my father because sons must not cry i must be on the lineup of preachers no sons must cry for saving i want to be the one saving give others and achafika and others let them preach and we sit down and clap hands for our brothers because as sons we are not here to preach we are here to serve the vision we are here to lift the vision, not to stand on the pulpit. And you say, Father, you preach next Sunday, me next ago, for me to be here to have an in the pulpit. No, no, no. Sons are there to serve their father. So I did the sitting somewhere there as long as I know I am a son. I am a specialist son, no matter the position, no matter where I sit, I am still a son. So it's not about being commented. It's not about being uh, acknowledged in front of people. That is childish behavior. The true mature sons, they don't wait for being commented or what. They just serve quietly. Because we are all sons. We are all brothers. 
Hallelujah. Let other brothers preach. Let other brothers also do something in the house of God. We come. When it's ESC time, I take a back seat. I move from my seat. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that as a son, when it's Sunday, it's prophet up. You take the seat which you are supposed to sit. Can we, slip, can we clap our hands for that? <laughs> Father, I pray. Lift your hands. I pray for a spirit of faithfulness, submission and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Thanksgiving and praise unto you to glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, O Lord. We glorify your name. We thank you, Father. When we come, we are coming to feed in Jesus' name. Clap your hands unto Jesus. Can you come, my son? Come, I want to bless you. This young man will be very rich. He will be very prosperous. Remain serving him. You may look like you are a leper, but... Is a prophet with my eyes. You are going very far, very, very far. Very, very far. Some of the things I cannot tell you now which God is showing me because they are too big. They are too big. You are going far. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, this young boy is going far. Rakashaba. Very, very far. Very. You will sit with kings. You will sit with kings. He will sit with the presidents in the mighty. Can you celebrate his future? He will sit with presidents. Be submissive. Zinu Zamwari Baba Gutraga Taura Wagadi Zinu Dakuita Kakupusa So Zangwari Zangwari Ingwe Tonga Wagapusa Asi Wagangwari Behave like you are a fool yet you are not one you will miss on the miraculous some of us we are just quiet saving our fathers we don't talk too much but yet being blessed go to the department that is running with the vision can we celebrate those who are Join those that are honoring the vision. Can you shout, I love you, Jesus? Shout, I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus, with all my heart. Lift your hands, say, with all my heart. Maria Kata, receive. Yes, receive. She's the mother. Receive the blessing. It's coming to the family. In Jesus' mighty name. It's coming to the family. Sister Gugu, where are you? God is saying, I'm now remembering you in 2024. Can you come? Your time to be remembered is coming now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord said, remembrance has started already. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's why you were facing some challenges this season. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you to see what's coming. Because he wants you to concentrate on the problems. But yet, your season of remembrance is coming. Because I'm now seeing a wedding. I'm seeing a marriage. I'm seeing... Shakata Rabakali. I'm seeing it buying another level of a car in 2024, which is different from what she's driving right now. Yes, from December, from now on, let your business begin to rise. We speak into the business in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody shout glory? Can somebody shout glory? Tell Masawe I have delivered you already. The demons that were in you are they are gone. They are gone. They are gone. Your wedding has been released.
The Lord is saying, if you were not under me, nothing was going to happen in your life. You were going to continue moving in the same circle. Now, it's very important to, to locate your spiritual covering. Because if you miss your spiritual covering, you miss a lot of things. I think I, I delivered more than five times because the grip was too much. Hallelujah. But the Lord was saying, next year, I'm telling you, for sure you will attend the wedding. She is going to be lobolad in the name of Jesus. And my daughter, God is going to use you, not just to sing. Do you know that this girl didn't know that she is a preacher of the word? She will preach. She will encourage many people by her life testimonies of a past background. Most of the preachers that you see preaching today, no, I'm not saying she's going to be a pastor. I said she will be among some preachers in the kingdom women that will be known by people. Hallelujah. And the people would want to hear her because she will encourage so many people that were hopeless. Because a season of remembrance has come in Jesus' name. Yes. Once you see Lobola coming to your family, money is also coming in every realm. Changes are going to take place. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout yes! Somebody shout yes! There is a, a, a man who can't walk, who is on crutches. Where is Baba Atidawedu? Seguru Atidawedu, where are you? Is he here? He's gone. Sekuru Atinawedu, where are you? Is this not Atinawedu? Is what his name? Huh? Nanaka. Sekuru Nananga. On crutches, where are you? Are you seeing where he's seated? Maybe he's no longer hearing. He's gone. Hello? He is gone. All right. Shakato Boda Badan. Oh, he's gone home. Oh, my God. <laughs> he is this miracle. Because today is his day of walking. Help him to come with his crutches. Hallelujah. Because I saw him walking when I was praying in the office there. Hallelujah. I saw him walking without crutches. Doctors have said so many things that you won't walk. Uh, what, what, what? But I want you to know that there is a chief doctor who is called Jesus. Today, I want to pray for him. If you are sick, can you lift your hand? Anyone not feeling well, lift your hand. I'm about to conclude now. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. I want to collect offering and dismiss the church. Hallelujah. Lift. Anybody who is not feeling well, when I was praying at the Solomon Gate there, I saw so many people that are sick. I don't know whether it's an infection, uh, atmos infectious atmosphere in Bulawayo. It's like coughing. Many people have chest pains. Uh, and even some children are not going to school, uh, especially after swimming. It's like there is a bug that is moving in the city. The Lord was saying, I want to heal so many people. The moment this heat started, so many people are not feeling well. Can you stand on your feet right now if you are not feeling well? Stand on your feet. Shakarabada. Look at the number. Look at the number. Can you stretch your hands towards the pulpit? Father, I pray as a prophet of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Marianda Hala Brahali Kahuta Muranda. Masakato Mali Brahadiya Bashiakada. I now release the spirit of healing upon each and everyone who is standing on their feet right now. I pray that you may be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. 
We glorify your name, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord. All right, please, guys, uh, can I have five guys uh, to carry Seguru? Carry him, five guys, because he can't even walk. Just carry him so that he comes here. Five guys, carry him up and bring him here. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for healing. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of Jesus. The power of healing is in this place. Oh, Lord, the power of miracles, the power of signs and wonders is here. We rebuke every doubt in the hearts of your people. We rebuke every lack of faith because it's not about me. It's about you, Jesus. It's about you. 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 It's about you, Lord Jesus. You are now free from today. 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 Mandala Bakai. Give him his crutches. Let him stand on his crutches. Let him stand. Bora Bakala Bada. Mandia Mandai. Sahuta Kreta. Morandara Baba. Shaka. Lift your hands. Say, I'm being healed right now. Shout, I'm being healed right now. Shout, I am being healed right now. Say, I receive health in my body. Yes, be thou made whole. Receive your healing. Can you take a step forward? Uh, can you take a step? As you take your step forward, be cleansed like the lepers were healed. Lord, we release the miracle working power. We give glory to you today. Brethren, true faith is ability to celebrate a miracle even before you see one. Can you celebrate your testimony? We walk by faith and not by sight. We celebrate before we see. Can you celebrate? Can you celebrate your healing? In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Rabba Kalabada. Manda Rababa. Can you? He wants to vomit. He wants to vomit. Run with a bucket. Something is happening. Let's be delivered. Be delivered. Yes, be delivered. Be delivered. Look at the water that is coming out. Maranda Rabakai. Marendaka Shakala. Marianda witchcraft. Out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Everything! Yes, come out! Come out! Everything out now! Everything out! Everything out! Everything out! Everything out! In the name of Jesus! Mandia! Mandiaka! Tiama! Dalia Mahala! Eh! Rahunda! Mundakata! Mundakata! Seguru! From today, every power that was in your body is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Mandia Mandala Kate. Maria Nderebedea. They brought him all the way from Mutare. So I, I was his son to our my elder here. They were telling me the stories that he can't walk. But as I was praying, the Holy Spirit said, No, I want to do a miracle today. He has to walk in the name of Jesus. Yes, he must walk in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Death, go! Come out! Death, come out! Death, come out! Death, come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, sickness, go. Out of his life. Yes, out. From today, everything that was in your body is broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. Face this direction. Face this direction. Marianda Rabaka. Marianda, walk with your crutch. Walk with your crutch. Walk with your crutch. Walk with your crutch. Mandia Kasha. Thank you, Jesus. Walk with your crutch. Walk with your crutch. Walk with your crutch. Father, I now release power. I now release anointing upon this man. Now stop. Look at me. 
today is your day to walk without these crutches. Do you believe that Jesus can heal, heal you? Hello? Yes, I do. Do you believe that Jesus can make you to walk without these crutches? I believe, hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Now, throw the, throw, throw the left crutch. Throw the left one. Throw on the left side. Throw that one now. Throw the next one. Walk now. Walk. Walk. Can you walk? Can you walk? Can you walk now? Walk now. Walk. Walk in the name of Jesus. Walk. Walk, 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 walk. Walk, 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 walk. Walk, 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 walk. Walk in the mighty name of Jesus. Walk right now in the name of Jesus. Walk right now. Look at him. He's now walking without the crash. Continue walking. Yes, walk, Sekul, walk. I know he has no food. He is weak. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Rabakasha, walk, 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 walk. Can we celebrate what God is doing now? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Can we celebrate Jesus? Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Sekul, you are now healed. You don't need this. The problem. The problem is that he doesn't just have food. Hallelujah. Because he was not eating. There was water coming out. It's deliverance. Hallelujah. Doctors have said permanently this man is never going to walk. I said that's a lie. As long as a prophet is in Bulawayo. As long as there is a man of God. That is a lie. In the mighty name of Jesus. We prove those doctors that Jesus is the best doctor. Now can you turn? Turn on your own. Turn, 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 Sekul, turn, I, turn, I. Ah, ah, look at that. He has turned. Walk now, walk faster. Walk a little bit faster. Walk a little bit faster. Walk a little bit faster. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate. Father, we are praying. In the mighty name. Yes, walk, 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 walk. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for more strength. I pray for more strength. Yes, I pray for more strength. Mama, Tina Wedu, Onega, Baba, when you are Fumba. Your father is now walking. Thank you, Jesus. Can you bring a chair? Bring a chair. Let him rest. Bring a chair. Can we celebrate the name of the Lord? Well, lift your hands, say thank you, Jesus. Shout thank you, Jesus. Father, I now pray for strength on this man. Let him begin to eat. He was no longer eating even. Hello? Yes, he was eating a little food. done for your father I praise the Lord I, I don't know how to thank God for what he has done for my father can we celebrate he's going to live life has been released in the name of Jesus can we clap hands to Jesus anybody who can't walk who was brought to this service anybody who can't walk I'm sensing anointing uh, do you have someone else maybe dear. please I am not the healer I'm not the healer even if they don't walk all right today but I know they will walk once I pray because there is something happening all right she's in a wheelchair here all right Carry her, carry her, carry her, carry her, carry her. Some three sisters, carry this girl, carry this girl, carry her up. Let her come to the front. Monda Karoba Kashia. Mondia Masukada. Come here, come here. Otaria Deshia Kaha. 
Jesus. We really see. In the name of Jesus. Come out, you spirit of the devil. Loose in Jesus' mighty name. Don't worry, Sekuru, even of vomiting that is happening. There is deliverance. There are witchcraft things that are coming out. Loose this girl. Out in Jesus' name. Out. Come out of the leg. Loose the leg. Loose the leg. Loose the leg. Loose the leg. You demons of the devil. Witchcraft. That made it wake up not walking and limping like a disabled person. From today, I release strength on your knees. Strength on your legs. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rapa Ramandiaka Shabara. Rabalabira. Ramandara Bakaria. Rema, can you remove that bandage? Remove that bandage right now. Maria Hoshi Bakata. Father, we are praying now for healing power. Remove it quickly, 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 quickly. Faster, 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 faster. Mandala Bakata Rabada. Mondeka Huta Huranda Rababa. Remove it, remove it, remove it, remove it. Father, we are praying in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mahali Kahosa Huta Ure Mandia. We free her in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, continue touching that leg from today. Heal this girl from the wheelchair. Let her walk. Let her walk, oh God. Let her walk. This girl, I once prayed for her. She's in a wheelchair. She was declared, who is the relative, please come. She had an accident, was it? Did the, how many times did the car roll? Uh, once. It once, yes. rolled once. Yes. You were telling me that they said she will not walk. Yes. She will never walk. Yes. I deny that and denounce it in Amen. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I now speak as a prophet. Yes, this yes, girl, yes. as I stand yes. here, she shall walk in yes. the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. But it's going to happen progressively. As I said the first day when I prayed for her. Now, even when I'm looking at her, do you notice there is a change which is happening? Was that time she was pale, twisted, the bones were twisted like something. But now I am asking her that, sister, before I pray for you for the second round, is there anything happening? And she is saying something. What are you, what's now happening in your life? Can you tell people? I can now move myself. I'm able to bat myself. <laughs> She can now move herself. She can now path herself. That is degree one healing in the progressive dimension. Can we celebrate that in the mighty name? I, 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 I love this Jesus because he deals with the impossible situations. Because he cannot be Jesus if he cannot deal with with what doctors have declared impossible. Because I know what Jesus can do. If you're a doctor, I'm not criticizing doctors, but they have no right to judge your life, to tell you you never walk when Jesus is still alive. No, 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 no. They have no right to tell you, I'm giving you three months, you are dying. You have cancer six days, because they are not God. It is their chemistry judgments, but there is a judgment of Jesus. He loves you, sister. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I now want to pray for you to walk, to come out of this wheelchair. What else are you now doing which you couldn't do? I'm able to turn myself. You are not able to turn yourself. Yes. You are not able to bath yourself. Yes. You are not able to, to. You are saying you are now standing on your own, or what? You, you or bathing. 
bathing myself. You're bathing yourself. Yes. All right. Okay. So God is doing something. Keep on believing. Hallelujah. Keep on believing. I see you walking. I see you walking. There are many people that I saw walking, and you know they are walking today. Who are in wheelchairs? So she will walk. Don't worry. She will walk. Hallelujah. And she is on the go. Keep on coming to church. Your leprosy is going. As you go, as you continue coming, something is happening along the way. I said something is happening. Something is happening. Fire! In the name of Jesus, let her be healed. Let her be healed. Let her be healed. Father, we thank you for this girl. She is now healed from today. Remove the sin. Hallelujah. Sister, can you walk now? Walk, 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 walk. Walk, walk, walk. All right. Let me touch the leg. In the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke this demon that was there. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We release the healing stripes, the healing power, the healing anointing on your life. In Jesus' name. I remove everything that was holding your leg. Walk, walk on the red carpet. Walk now. In Jesus' name. Yes, walk on your own. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you. All right, lastly, lastly, can I have four people? Two on this side, two on this side. I'm concluding. We want to collect offering. Yeah, I, I know what I am doing. Please uh, ignore it because this realm is, is no longer your realm. It's the realm of the prophetic. So uh, sometimes, even when I lifted you that day, you were crying. Yeah, it was like I'm punishing you, but I will be following instructions. And the Lord said, I must do this three times. Today is the second. The third time she will run on the red carpet there. Can you lift her? No matter the pain, lift her. Because I, well, she doesn't belong to that wheelchair. I just want you to help her to just stand balancing her. I will not pray for her while she's in the wheelchair because I am declaring her position. Dr. Nue, you can come and see him. Elders, come and see elders. My elder, where I'm on, was out to come and check. All right, can you move this next? Move, move, move. You see, even how they look, there is no strength in these legs. So if this girl will walk, she will be healed. Yes, 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 that this is God. Magazo wana mskana kada ya kufamba otiza mwari. Nezwa true wana baizwa. Ya mongo so what is the human beings. Father, I now pray for you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name for your life. I declare walking from today. Let her recover in the name of Jesus. We release the healing anointing to continue working in her life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord, for testimony. Thank you. Sister, believe, do you believe that you will walk? Yes. Can you shout aloud? Do you believe that Jesus will make you walk? Yes. Father, I thank you, Lord. Strengthen your legs. Lord, I now speak the word of Dr. Jesus. And we say from today, this girl is now walking. In Jesus' name, your limbs are now strengthened. Your bones are now strengthened. Thank you, Lord. Thank you from today. Let her recover. In Jesus' name, can you put her back in the wheelchair? Let's celebrate the name of God. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Father, we are done. We thank you. It's now 12 o'clock. Let me now collect offering so that I release you. Do you want the anointing to continue moving? The power of God. So we are continuing a season of remembrance. It's a season of miracles. We are continuing next Sunday. Please bring the blind, bring the paralyzed, those who have strokes, bring them to the house of God. Can we clap hands for bringing sick people? 
There is a Jesus that can heal. There is a Jesus that can make the lame to walk. Lift your hands to that Jesus. Lift your hands to that. Father, we are praying as a church today. I bless your people and I pray for them. I glorify your name. Receive the anointing. Receive the glory. Receive the grace. 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 Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? Thank you, my Lord. Where is Nube Sadi? Where are you? And your wife. Nube, can you run to the front? The Lord is saying, He now wants to give you. You have been laboring, coming to my house, and when I call you, you obey. The Lord was saying, I'm now blessing your business. I'm seeing in less than 24 months is too far. I can see even 2024, a very beautiful car that is coming to you. Your business is going to start prospering. In the name of Jesus, orders are going to start coming. People shall start thinking that you are using juju. Touch and bless him, Lord. I am breaking something from his neck. A yoke of poverty is going. Yes, be free from today. Lord, we are freeing them. We free him. In Jesus' mighty name. Come out every limitation. Go out of your body. Out in Jesus' name. Lord, we are now breaking every force of the devil. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, O Lord. We thank you. Pastor from Botswana. This season of 2024, I prophesied to you when we were at the cemetery there. And the Lord is saying, I'm still seeing the same thing. Your place where you are is too small. It's too small because God is bringing increase now. Hallelujah. He is bringing increase. And I said there are two people that were giving you trouble, that went. They are coming back to apologize. But there is a woman that remained who was giving you problems. God is already dealing with that woman also. Hello, sir. It's true, bro, man. So what's going to happen is that the Lord is saying, I am now in a season to prosper you. And no one will be able to touch what's going to happen. That church is going to increase. Yes, go to a bigger place. After this, by January, locate another place. Hallelujah. Or extend where you are. Stretch the curtains. Do something. Put a big tent. It's done. Can you kneel down? Father, I pray for him. We release the glory, power of God upon his life. Touch him right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name, O Lord. Apostle Guarimbo, the Lord is opening your eyes in the prophetic. When I made you to stand on the pulpit, you are not going to just be an apostle, but you are going to move in a serious prophetic anointing. I'm seeing the gift is there, but God is going now to sharpen it in a serious way. And um, now the Lord is saying, I'm now remembering you financially. Your churches are going to grow. Finances are going to increase in your life. Hallelujah. Even the archbishop shall be shocked. Sometimes the seeds, the honor that you'll be now giving him financially because God is bringing finances around you. And it's coming in 2023. Father, we thank you for apostle. We bless him right now. Let him receive in Jesus' name. Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? And, and say, uh, the president of Eros, can you come here? It's not by accident that you came. Hallelujah. It's not by accident. Because there is now a transition happening. Yeah, because I'm now seeing uh, doors opening in East Africa, West Africa. Yes, God is going to make your product to appear on high platforms of awards in the world. 
you are going to be recognized even by the government of South Africa. You are going to be a voice in South Africa. And the Lord was saying that this man, if he remains humble, if he remains humble, because you have a kingly anointing and a priest, you are a king and a priest, you can pastor, you can do business. You are like a David with the kingly and ministerial uh, gifting. But the Lord was saying is when I also to be using you in the area of ministry in a serious way, and then there is going to be increase. Now, in South Africa, the number billion in runs is now written on your forehead. It's not far from now. The Lord is lifting that product called the arrows. The same way like arrows, it's going to rise in the air. In the name of Jesus, it's going to rise. You are going to be recognized in every nation. There will be offices in Southern Africa, Central Africa, West, East Europe, and Asia. They will be buying your product. In fact, I'm seeing there is a man, a man you have been praying for you. There is someone that you want, a product designer. I am not good scientifically, but to take your company to another level. That person, that person that you need to change uh, the status quo of arrows to go because he has got ideas. The Lord is saying, I'm giving you the ability to attend. They are coming two of them with prophetic ideas for that business to take it to another level. Hallelujah. You are going to testify and it's happening in this year of Remembrance 24, 2024. Father, I pray for him. In Jesus, receive the power. Receive the anointing. Receive the glory. Receive the glory. Yes, I pray for his hands right now. Manda kata. Mandia manda. We put billions in this hands. Let him be in the Forbes book of remembrance in US dollars. Let him compete with great people. He will not only do this. Yes, the Lord is saying you have also a desire uh, construction. Yes, construction, construction. You are getting into construction. Yes, there will be big deals in that industry as well. You will be competing with the best of the best in South Africa. Lord, I thank you that this man who will buy properties he is now blessed from today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, you will get presidents shall call you to invest into their nations. The same way Dangote is called, you will be called, my you will be called, you will be called, your name will be called. I'm hearing your name being called. Can we celebrate him in the mighty name of Jesus? It's happening. God bless you. God bless you. It's done. You will come back to testify. Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? There is someone who wanted to commit suicide. A lady and a man. The Lord is saying you will go to hell. Don't commit suicide. One is sitting here and another one at that side. Stop what you were planning to do. Because you will die and go to hell. Many people think when they commit suicide, they are going to rest. No, you will be in for fire. The moment you come out of your body after suicide, you, are, <laughs> you, you, you will start to suffer more than you were suffering on earth. Because hell is death and you will never come. No matter my children what happens, never ever think of taking your life. It's better to stay under a bridge than to kill yourself. I said it's better to be homeless than to kill yourself. Never. That is a demonic thought that you must deal with. I pray that God may rebuke that spirit from your heart in Jesus' name. Can we clap your hands for that? Thank you, Jesus. I still repeat, there is somebody you are keeping a large sum of money in your house which is not tithed. Please, please, please. There are two that I saw. One obeyed 
but there is still another one yet to obey. When robbers strike, don't say, I didn't warn you, because you'll be surprised how they will take that money. Protect that money. I'm talking a large sum of money, which is more than 20,000 US dollars in a safe. And it's not tithed. I'm seeing demons that are watching and looking at that money. The last time I prophesied about it, and to be, I will not expose they are my children, but I have two sons that lost money. During years, two sons. One lost 20,000 US dollars, one 10,000 US dollars. But I will not make them to stand, but it's two of my sons. It is paining me. Because demons, they don't take 10%, they take 100 they take all of it. God just wants 10, but demons take everything. Even if you say, Maria, I'm going to get some safe, I'm going to get some safe. Satan, I'm going to get some safe. I'm going to get some safe. I'm going to get Two people who carry that thing, and you'll be surprised without a crane. In the name of Jesus. Can we clap our hands for the prophetic? So I don't want you to... Now there is a demon which is sort of like looking for money this season, which is not tithed. So I, I am done with that one. I am done with that one. Then uh, there is a woman. I want you to phone me, the last one. A woman who is cheating the husband. You are saving. You are saving in a department that greets people. Hallelujah. She's serving in a department that what? You have to cancel that relationship. Is there? Okay. I want to break that thing today in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? amen. Now your boyfriend... Number one is HIV. That's why I'm saying, because you are going to bring a disease in your family, my daughter. Please, I beg you to stop that relationship off. Because it's like a workmate or something like that. You, you met at work. I know your husband is not appreciating you, is not commenting you as you want, but don't go in that direction. It's a wrong direction. Correct yourself in this week that is coming. Because I am seeing the same thing that is killing your people, that killed your sisters, that killed your mother with HIV, that same demon. Don't think it will spare you, my daughter. It wants to have you also. It wants to kill you as well. So please destroy that relationship. Phone me if you are failing so that I pray for you. In Jesus' name. Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? I am done.